Hey guys, are you ready for another lesson to tackle this week? Okay, so our lesson for this week is all about application problems on cosine functions. Okay, and of course, as we come up with this topic, we have this competency wherein we're going to involve ourselves in solving problems in, uh, involving circular functions because we all know cosine function is one of the uh, functions in circular. So again, uh, deal with me with this special topic on cosine functions. Let's have to recall on the steps on our problem solving. Okay, we have of course the um, uh, reading and understanding the problem as the first step. As we read and understand the problem, uh, we are going to represent the unknowns and then relate the unknowns. Once we are relating the unknowns, it's advised to us to come up with a good sketch or picture out the scenario because we all know a good sketch showing given information and unknowns can be very helpful in understanding the problem okay and then of course the next step would be for us to work on a equation okay and then of course we are to work out or solve the given uh, problem and of course the last step is we need to check our answer and prove our answer is correct with respect to the given problem okay uh, so we have this first example Okay, we are to deal ourselves with, okay, a weight is suspended from a spring and is moving up and down in a simple harmonic motion. Okay, at the start, the weight is pulled down 5 cm below the resting position and then re released. Okay, after 8 seconds, the weight reaches its highest location for the first time. You are asked here for the equation of the motion. Okay, so as we have our steps in problem solving we all know that um, of course there is this what you call weight that is suspended from a spring okay and of course the given here is the time started is zero and then it was pulled down so the direction of pulling down is downward from the result pulling down so it's down so it's it denotes as a negative okay and then of course af after eight seconds is another given and of course the unknown here is our equation of the given motion. If we are to illustrate, we have the picture or illustration of our scenario. There, have, there you have it. And of course, from the given, t is zero from the resting position. Okay. And of course, uh, we are given that the weight is located at its lowest position at t equals zero. And then of course, it was what? Pulled down five centimeter. Okay. With that pulled down five centimeter, it is denoted as y equals negative 5, okay, when t equals 0. So what will be our working equation, okay, using cosine function? So therefore, we have here y equals negative 5 cosine bt. b there refers to our uh, one of the variable in dealing with the period. And of course, t there is our time, okay? So we all know from the given, um, it took the weight 8 seconds from the lowest point to its immediate highest point. So 8 seconds upward, 8 seconds downward. So half of the period is said to be 8 seconds. So from our um, uh, formula for period is 2 pi over b, we get the half of it and of course equated to 8. So as we all know, we cancel out 2 there okay, in the numerator and the denominator. Then, of course, the remaining answer is pi over b equals 8. But we would want to uh, solve for the value of b from our working equation a while ago. So, it's simply cross multiply b and 8. Okay, so as we cross multiply, the value of our b is simply pi over 8. Okay, so after that, we substitute. Therefore, we have y equals negative 5 cosine. And then our b here is pi over 8. Then we have t. So, final answer for the equation being asked in our problem here is y equals negative 5 cosine pi t over 8. Okay, let's have another example. Our second example here is suppose you ride a ferris wheel and then the lowest point of the, fer uh, the wheel is said to be 3 meters off the ground. Its diameter is 20 meters. Okay, after it is started, the ferris wheel revolves at a constant speed and it takes 32 seconds to bring you back again to the riding point. After riding for 150 seconds, you are asked here for the approximate height above the ground. Okay, 
So again, the scenario, you are in the Ferris wheel. Then this Ferris wheel is 3 meters uh, above the ground. And of course, the diameter is 20 meters. And of course, um, it takes 32 seconds to take a, what you call this one, a one revolution, okay? And of course, after riding for 150 seconds, where are you now? So I mean your specific location, okay? So from the scenario or our steps in problem solving, we picture out again, there you have it, our scenario. Then from the given, uh, you notice our diameter is given as 20 meters. Off the ground is said to be three meters, okay? So what else? Um, we need, of course, to ignore the fixed value of 3 meters off the ground and assume that the central position passes through the center on the wheel and is parallel to the ground. Okay, and of course, we let T be the time in seconds elapsed that you have been riding the Ferris wheel and Y is said to be the directed distance at your location with respect to the assumed central position at time T. Okay, so our Y here is said to be negative 10. Why is it negative 10? Because of course, height. And of course, it's downward. So with this one half of your 20 meters as the diameter is 10, the negative there, guys, is simply denoting our direction. It's downward, okay. And of course, um, our t is zero. Then of course, the model, if we are going to next step is to have our working equation. Our working equation, therefore, is y equals negative 10 cosine bt. Take note that t is said to be greater than or equal to zero. So again, our working equation is negative 10. And of course, from the given, okay, the, uh, uh, your Ferris wheel takes 32 seconds to move from the lowest point to the next. Okay, so 32 seconds. So from there, we are going to solve for the period. Okay, um, 2 pi over b equals 32. Okay, we would want to solve for the value of b. So we we multiply both sides with one half and of course uh, two here with respect to your numerator and the denominator is being cancelled out and then of course um, 32 uh, one half of 32 is 16 so therefore pi over b equals 16 again we would want to solve for the value of b so we just cross multiply b and 16 so we come up with b equals pi over 16 so from our working equation we have y equals negative 10 cosine pi t over 16. This is our working equation. So it's just a matter of substituting b with pi over 16. So there you have it, guys. And of course, as we continue, okay, from the given when t is 150 seconds. So how uh, we are now ready to solve for the, uh, the height, okay. We are going to substitute t. From our working equation with 150 so we have y equals negative 10 cosine 150 pi over 16 this is our working equation a while ago then of course solving that using our calculator we come up now with 3.83 okay so we have rounded it off already and of course of uh, as we picture this out okay 3.83 plus 13 equals 16.83 okay so how did you arrive with 13? Where, this, where is this 13? A while ago, this is 10 diameter, then another 3 here. So that's 13. Then of course, 3.83 from our, um, the, um, I mean, the location of our 150 seconds is this one. Okay. And of course, you are asked there. So that's 16.83. Okay. Meters. So there you have it, guys. As we have solved for the height or the location, a specific location after 150 seconds. So 16.83 meters. Okay, so i um, hoping you have learned something today, guys. And um, of course, by the next lesson or the next topic, see you again there. And of course, I uh, hope you have learned something today. Thank you, guys.